Right? Where are you? Because sometimes as men, we can be there, but we're not really there. And somehow women know. I don't know how you women know that we are not there. We are somewhere else, even though we're right beside you, you go, you are not here right now. You are not present right now. <laughs> That's a superpower, right? How, how is that? We need, as men, we need to lead our families. We need to lead our wives. We need to lead. What happened in the garden? You know what happened in the garden of Eden? Adam was not leading his wife. It was the devil that was leading his wife. It was the devil that was deceiving his wife. It was the devil somehow that got to his wife. She submitted to the devil, not to Adam. And who was blamed for it? It was Adam. It was Adam's responsibility. So as men, it is our responsibility. And what we want to do here at Conquer is that we want to strengthen the men. We want to strengthen the marriages. Because if we can strengthen the men to lead their families, to, to lead like Jesus, to love like Jesus, then the marriages will be strengthened. Right? Because it's up to us. Men, right? Turn, turn to a man beside you and say, it's up to you. It's up to you, brother. It's up to you. It's up to you, brother. It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you, Be present. Be present. Where are you? Bring, be present, and Matt said, bring presents also. <laughs> she knows, right? She knows. Somehow she knows. she knows. Turn to the person beside you and say, she knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. So men, hey, okay, listen to me, men. You need to communicate that you appreciate, love, and cherish her. Okay? You need to communicate this in different ways. Sometimes it's verbally. Sometimes it's a hug. You know, what Catherine told me is that, you know, you can just hug me and I can feel like you're there, you're present. And so I'll do that. I'll just kind of lean on, give, give affection. Right? It just communicates that. Amen? That's why uh, we hug one another also. Right? So I try and if I, if I see you, I'll try and give you a hug. Just to let you know that I appreciate you. And also some of us, that's our love language, right? We're going to be talking about the love language in, in another session. Appreciate love and cherish her. Communicate this. Now, you're, you're going to say, Pastor, um, I think I've communicated it enough. No, you haven't. Communicate it more. As soon as you think, that you've communicated it enough, communicate it more. Right? Am I right, women? Yes? Yes. Amen. She knows. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> women, communicate that you respect him, believe in him, trust in him. This is one thing that men need. Men need to know that you believe in them. Actually, you know, if you've been together for a long time, you'll remember when you first got together, one of the things that your husband or your boyfriend loved so much about you was you probably always believed in him. You always encouraged him. Wow, Galing Mo. Wow, you're so good. Wow, you're so handsome. Wow, you're so smart. And we're like, well, I think I'm falling in love. <laughs> I love exactly. this. Why? Men this need is this. true love. <laughs> yeah, this is true love. This is true love. I will give you 100. <laughs> right? Communicate, you respect him. There's, there's nothing more painful for a man to think that his woman does not believe in him. There's nothing more, there's nothing more painful. You know, um, there's nothing more painful. You know, men need that. And that's why as guys, when we encourage one another, sometimes guys just want to go out with other guys because we, we will encourage one another, right? <laughs> Bro, you're so good, bro. Oh, thank you, bro. I never hear that at home. <laughs> bro, you can do it, bro. What? Uh, yeah, she hasn't told me that in a while. <laughs> and then why? We, we, we'll gravitate. And, and, and some guys, they'll, they'll just have, you know, guys night out all the time. And, and, and the wife is wondering, like, how come you don't take me out? <laughs> just like, boys night out all the time. Well, we need to communicate this. You know, actually, that may, for us men, that makes us fall in love with you more. And actually, when we feel like you don't believe in us, it hurts. Yes. It hurts, right, man? Amen. It, it, it hurts. And that's just the honest truth, right? So communicate this. We need to constantly communicate this. Every word is a seed. What's happening when we're communicating? Number one, basic communication. Number two, information exchange. Number three, expressing needs and desires. Number four, decision-making. Number five, problem-solving. Number six, persuasion. Number seven, entertainment. 
Number eight, relationship building. Every word is a seed. Every word is a seed. So what are you planting? Are you a consumer? Or are you planting and nur nurturing? Every word is a seed. Remember that. Okay, every word is a seed. You're planting. You're planting. And tone as well, right? Tone. Okay. Okay, we're going to go through all of these. Uh, care tone, frustrated tone, angry tone, love tone, patient tone, impatient tone, compassionate tone, understanding tone. Okay, let's say your wife is asking you to do the dishes. Uh, so you can say it caringly. Okay, hon, I'll do the dishes. Okay, I'll do the dishes. All right, I'll do the dishes. Oh, I'll do the dishes for you, love. Tone matters, right? Patience. It's your tone communicating patience, right? Han, I can't hear you. What? Han, I can't hear you. What? Han, I can't hear you. Or, or Han, sorry, what's that? I can't. I can't hear you. Come closer together. And when you can't come, and when you can't hear each other, when the communication is hurting. You come closer to each other, right? You come closer. Oftentimes, the reason why we yell, you know why people yell? Because they feel like they're not being heard. You're yelling, you're raising your voice because you feel like you're not being heard. We need to come closer. We need to be heard, okay? So patience, tone matters. This is something I struggle with because my tone, I'm coming on. I'm from, the, we're very loud, like my grandmother would tell you, we're just naturally, we like to say we're just passionate, right? We're just, we're just passionate. But there's something that we learn over time, that women especially are sensitive to tone, and men are sensitive to tone as well. If a woman will speak to a man disrespectfully in the tone, we feel that as well, we feel that. It hurts. And then we will answer back with a tone that is unloving, right? So tone matters. John 4, 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. You know, back then, when Jesus was going to say living water, she would actually think water that's flowing. Okay? So in the Hebrew, the Israelites would have thought living water is like from a river. It's flowing. It's nonstop. She's still thinking natural. She's like, where do I get this water? Because she's coming at this well. It is midday. And she's coming at this well when nobody else is there. Imagine this encounter with Jesus is just her and Jesus. Why? Because back then, the women would go to the well in the morning. Why? Because this was a desert plain. It was very hot. And if you go midday, the water's too hot. So you would go in the morning, grab it. But how come this woman was not there in the morning? Well. The town probably knew about her. They probably, in, in Tagalog we call it chismis. It's when you talk, the town was probably talking about her. Oh, she's had five wives, I mean five husbands. She's in and out of relationships. And she was not only an outcast in her community, she felt like an outcast even within herself. She felt different. She felt like nobody understands me. Nobody loves me. And that's why she was going there in isolation. She's going there in isolation, and she's, she's wanting this water. She's wanting this water that Jesus is offering her right now. And then Jesus says something quite interesting. This is when he confronts her. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. He confronts her. Now, she says this. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're already saying, I have no husband. The woman answered, yeah, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. There's this, uh, John Maxwell teaches this principle, and we can use it as well. It's just a principle, right? Um, you can take it from the Bible as well. It's called the sandwich principle, where Jesus said, go... Go, go get your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. It's true, she doesn't have a husband. And he said, you're right, you don't. The one you have is not your husband. She confronts him. And so sometimes in our relationships, we can do the same. We can do the sandwich principle. We can say something good, we can bring in, bring in the criticism, and then we can say something good as well. 
right? The brain picks up on encouragement um, less than it picks up on criticism. If you criticize your child, if you criticize your husband, if you criticize your wife, if you criticize your boyfriend or your friend one time, you're going to need to replace that with seven compliments. Because our brain naturally will gravitate towards the criticism more. It will hold on to the criticism more. This is just how our brains are wired because it's a defense mechanism. So now we need to remember, wow, I just criticized them. I got to sandwich that criticism with also something good. Because we can look for something good in one another as well, right? So it's called the sandwich principle. Where you have had five husbands. Now Jesus confronts her. Now she's confronted with truth. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now she's confronted. Jesus, you're something different. Now some of us have been confronted by Jesus. And then we'll notice in that moment, you're something different. Now I've, I've, I've listened to other philosophies. I've listened to law of attraction. I've studied maybe other religions. But Jesus, there's something different. Jesus, you reveal yourself in a way that reveals me. And you see what Jesus does here. He actually reflects her, right? And you know that that's what God will do with you. He will reflect your heart and allow you to see your heart. And eventually you'll have to confront that heart. And then what are you going to do with that confrontation? When Jesus confronts something that is not good for your relationship, that is not good for your life, what is our response? Here she says, I perceive you are a prophet. She notices, he knows more about her than she realizes. And you know that God knows more about you than you realize. God knows more about you than anybody else. Here, God knows everything about you. God knows every skeleton in the closet. God knows. Remember we said she knows? God knows. You can tell the person beside you, God knows. God knows. God knows. He's revealing himself now. Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you say that Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. So now she's talking about our fathers because, again, they have similar ancestry, right? She's half Israeli still. She's half an Israelite. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Notice how Jesus refers to God as Father again. Now he's saying that we don't worship here, we don't worship in the temple, the day will come when we will worship in spirit and in truth. Right? We will worship the Father, not just in Jerusalem, not just on the mountain. And that is because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We actually worship God with our bodies. We actually present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God, including your mind, including your heart, and your body. So when we are defiling our body, we are defiling God. When we are worshiping something else, we are, and, and you'll see that in husband and wife, if there's infidelity in a relationship, it's very painful. Why? Because the body has been violated, the temple has been violated. And then that hurts the relationship, right? And you see that time and time again, especially in our, our culture here. Now, what I said earlier was this, what you worship, you become. What you worship, you embody. So if you're worshiping your children, you'll become like a child. You're, you're, we can still uh, worship different things other than God. We can worship our job. We can worship our, our finances. We can worship our spouse even. Yeah. We can put our spouse ahead of God. Mm -hmm. And that also is not good. Because if you love God first, you will love your spouse the way Jesus loves your spouse. If you love God first, you will love them perfectly. If you put God first, you will listen to her. If you put God first, you will respect him. When we put God first, and he is our, our point of worship, then we become more like him. Right? Amen? Trust. Okay, let's talk about trust. Fostering reliability and faithfulness. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Let's read this together. Trust, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. My grandmother had this in her house. Every time you walked in the door, it's the first verse that's there. 
right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart because there's going to be times when you're not going to understand what's happening in your relationship. There's going to be times when you're not going to understand what's happening in your friendship. And you're going to have to go, I'm just going to trust God. Okay, there's going to be times when your wife is acting a certain way and you're like, what is going on? And you're going to have to go, I'm just going to have to trust in God and continue to love her. And there's going to be times when your husband is like, is he making the right decision? And you're going to have to go, well, I'm going to have to trust God and submit. Right? It's, it's difficult. It's the most difficult thing to do. But if you can trust God first, then the relationship issue also will go away. Why? Because there's no manipulation happening. There's no forcefulness happening. There's no aggression happening. Why? Because your trust is in the Lord. Turn to the person beside you and say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Here's the truth. When husbands love their wives the way Christ loves us, their wives receive healing. <clears throat> when we love our wives the way Jesus loves them, it brings healing. And we can only experience that when we experience the love of Jesus. When we experience the love of Christ, we will love our wives as Jesus loves us. Because an angry person <laughs> an angry person can only give anger. A loving person can give love. And what is the epitome of love? Jesus. God is love. Not love is God. God is love. Amen? Okay, flip side. Oh. Okay, let's go here. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the Word cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay, so this is very interesting. What is the Holy Spirit called here? A helper, right? Do you know what our wives are also called? A suitable helper. So sometimes, right? Sometimes our wives are the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I asked, uh, I asked Pastor Atika this the other day. I said, Pastor, how do you know when your wife is speaking? How do you know it's the Holy Spirit or the serpent? How do you know that? Easy. When, when, when it's the fruit of the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit. When it's not the fruit of the Spirit, it's the serpent. Remember, we talked about four people in your relationship, right? You, your spouse, God, and the devil's there too. And he's attacking. So we have to be aware of this. Now, how do you know if it's the helper? How do you know if it's the Holy Spirit speaking through your wife? Well, you have to know the Holy Spirit. How do you know the Holy Spirit? Know Jesus. Know the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. Now, we will know them by their fruit. We don't know them by their gifts. We know them by their fruit. So if it is love coming out, joy coming out, peace coming out, self-control coming out, then you know that of the Spirit. If it's not those fruit of the Spirit, then you know that it's not from the Spirit. Right? That's how you can kind of... And that's why it's important to memorize that. If there's anything you need to memorize in the Bible, memorize what the fruit of the Spirit is. Okay? Love, joy, peace. Then you know, okay, this is of the Spirit. Because if it's not in there, it's not. The Holy Spirit helper, wife helper. Right? So we see that. She's your helper. Right? She's your helper. Men need encouragement, respect, and adoration. And this is so true. Actually, this is why in a lot of relationships you see that uh, a man all of a sudden will have an affair with a secretary or something like that. Right? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger had an affair with his maid, I think. People are like, how is that? How, how did Arnold Schwarzenegger, how, how did that happen? Right? I'll be back. Like, how did he just get... <laughs> he has this hasta la vista wifey. Like, how did he get... Why? Probably because that she was adoring him. Right? She was respecting him. Why? Because she works for him. So it just looks like she's just willing to do anything. Right? Yeah, I'll help you. And, 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 and oftentimes, yeah. that can happen. Yeah. So women need to always remember... To let them know, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to, to serve. I'm here to respect you. I'm here to encourage you. I adore you. I know it sounds weird, right? But that's actually, for a man, they, they love that. We love that. Right? We love that. It's, 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 we're so insecure, right? There's just something in us 
that just loves to be adored, right? And it's not, it's not like uh, you're gonna fake it, right? Um, but you find something sincere to adore, right? You find something sincere to encourage, right? Um, you can, whatever it is, you look for it, right? Husband, you're, you're so strong-minded. <laughs> so, you're so aggressively loving, right? Like, I, I don't know what, you find something. You're so, you're so, you're so strong. You're, you're, um, you're, you're so hardworking, right? You're, you're, you're so, you take care of the kids. You're such a good provider. Say that to them. You know, try that. See, see what will happen. They'll reciprocate, right? Then they'll start showing you also. Oh, I cherish you. I love you. Men need this. Women need to be listened to. Right? Women need to be shown affection. Women need to be loved. Women need to be allowed to express themselves. Yes. Sometimes women, they're just going to express themselves, and we're going to go like, stop, Satan, stop. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get behind me in Jesus' name. <laughs> You know, but actually with women, and then women get together and then they just express. Men, let your woman express to you before she expresses to another man. Amen. Let them express to you. Yes. And just be quiet. Just zip it. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a time, there's this pastor, and they're missionaries, and we were actually hanging out. This is not Pastor Ridley Wong and Christine. By the way, it's their anniversary today. Uh, 28 years. <laughs> And, you know, they're shopping. This is a different pastor and his missionary wife, okay? This is not them. But they're shopping, you know? And the woman's saying, Dad, dear, I get, I, get, I get so tempted when I see clothing, when I see bags, when I see shoes. It's so tempting. I want to buy it. <laughs> when, when I see nice pants or a nice skirt, nice dress, I, I just, I want to get it. And then the husband says, Dear, you just tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. And she said, Dad, I tried that. But then he said, oh, it looks good from behind also. <laughs> you know, we, we have to be able to discern this. We, we need to allow them to express. Right? Sometimes they're just expressing. Right? Women are just expressing. And sometimes we're, we're like, why are you crazy right now? Why, why is this? What is going on in your mind? How are you even thinking this? This doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. But for them, it's not about logic. It's about emotion. It's about releasing that emotion. Yeah. And you let your wives release that emotion to you. Otherwise, they'll release it to somebody else. You let them release it to you. And you just listen. You just, you just, you just let, you put on a VR headset and you just, no, I'm just kidding. You just listen. And you, just, you don't need to say anything. You just listen. And then later when they're calm, when the devil's gone, then you can talk sense to them, right? Hun, I understand, right? Instead of going, Hun, that makes zero sense. You are not making any sense right now, right? You are, you are, you are illogical right now. Hun, be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. No, just let them express. Because we're logical, we can reason out. Women are very emotional, and they just want to let it out, okay? Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Wow, amen. Oh, that was a loud amen from the news up here. <laughs> John 4, 23. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. We worship in spirit and in truth. We worship God in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? We worship him authentically. We worship him truly. And when we're confronted by God, we have to, that's when we confront our demons. That's when we go, God, I swear this is you. When we're confronted that, oh, you know what? God doesn't want me to be uh, drinking every night. We, just, we take that, we surrender it to God. Oh, God doesn't want me to be looking at another woman that way. We take that, we surrender it to God. When, 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 when God sees in your heart that you're like, oh, what if I married this man? We would have so much more money. Well, what if I married this man? He would be so understanding. You take that thought, you make it captive to Jesus Christ, you make it obedient to Jesus Christ, and, 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 and you obey him. You say no. Now how do you know that person is the one for you? Well, if you got married, that person is the one for you. And you find a way. The reason why we get into conflicts is because we're opposites. Right? We're opposites. And actually your opposites will complement one another. Matt was here the other day. This is just chaotic. My Bibles were here, everything was all over the place. And Matt was looking over here and he was like, Let's fix this. 
And I was just like, sure, let's fix it. You know, he sees something that I don't see. You know, he has a, a strength that is my weakness. And if we allow, if we work together, we can do something for the Lord. Uh, your wives are have, more than likely you are attracted to each other because you're opposites. One's a night person, one's a morning person. One likes music loud, one likes music soft. One um, uh, is a morning person, one's a night person. I said that right. One uh, is is uh, gregarious and, and and outgoing. The other's a little shy and timid, right? And and these things we we we're, we're brought together. And, and we complement one another, okay? If your wife is here or your husband is here, can you, can you look at them and say, you compliment me. Look at them, look at them. Find them, find them, make eye contact. You compliment me. We compliment one another, okay? God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus brings it back, right, to the spiritual. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just, not just, not just going to church and playing church, not just acting like we love God, but really, in your heart, if you're like, God, I don't really feel that relationship with you, you know what you can ask him? God, I want that relationship with you. I want what Julius has. I want what Lawrence has, this relationship with you that is, that is, um, that is the living water, this relationship with you that is, that is giving. You know, you can ask God if you don't feel that. You can say, God, I want that. You can actually ask him, God, I, I want that relationship with you. I, wa I want to feel that living water. You know, you can act that simple. You can just say, God, I want to experience this relationship with you. Not religion. No, nobody cares for religion. God never told us to do religion with one another. No, he said do relationship with one. Love one another. And same with God. He isn't out here for religion. Anybody can do religion. Anybody can do, 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 do. Yeah. Right? It's Jesus that says it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. It's done. And that's why we can have a relationship with him. God is spirit. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. So they also believed in the Messiah. But what they believed in the Bible is only uh, five books that the Jews um, believed in. Okay, they didn't believe in the whole Old Testament like we, we uh, believe in. Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Now, I want you to understand this. The Samaritans only pick and chose from the Old Testament what they wanted to pick and choose. There's also a religion in this day that will pick and choose from the Bible what it wants to believe. Okay, That's why we are here to, to educate you, to train you, so that we, we read the whole Bible. And one of the goals that we have in our men's group and in this study is to go through the whole Bible. Okay, we want everybody to go through the whole Bible so you're not picking and choosing that's, that means you're just creating your own religion. That means you're just creating your own belief system. And that's not what we want. We want a belief system that is based on truth, right? That is based on eternal truths, because ultimately, we're going to live in eternity. The woman said to him, yeah, here we go. Jesus said to her, I can speak to you and he. Now he reveals he is the Messiah. This is when he reveals he is God. Right? He's, he reveals that he is God. And imagine he reveals this to a woman, okay? Pay attention to that. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. Remember what we were talking about? They, they don't talk to each other. That's why when the disciples got back, they were like, what? Jesus is talking to a woman. But no one said, what do you see? Or why are you talking with her? But they were thinking it, right? They were thinking it. Now, what's happening here is that the disciples are shocked at Jesus is breaking all tradition, and he is the one who went there. The Bible says that he had to go through Samaria. Why? He needed to encounter this woman. He needed to minister to this woman. Do you know that it is God who is reaching out to you? It is God who is chasing you. You may think it is you that is chasing God, but even here, somebody brought you here because it is God that is chasing you. Why am I here? Why am I in this basement? Why are we studying this? Because God is chasing you. Why are these people reaching out to me, inviting me to a Bible study, inviting me to church, inviting me to a Bible party? Because God is reaching out to you. It was Jesus that went out of his way because the Jews never passed through Samaria. They would go through the Jordan River, go down the Jordan River, go up the Jordan River, and, not, and bypass Samaria altogether. Why? 
because those were half-breeds. They didn't even want to interact with him. But Jesus needed 